Excellent. You think Johnny would like that? You know, that's, that begs the question, uh, you know, at, and I think just as a song, it's pretty fun. Yeah. He'd love that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Whether he'd be comfortable with all the attention, I don't know. Yeah, but, don't, but, you know, he's so cool that, uh, you know, you just got to write about songs yeah. and not worry about the consequences. Like, kind, of like, kind of like Joan Rivers, you got to make the joke and right. not worry exactly, about the consequences. Exactly. No, that's, so. He was fearless. You, you, can, right. you can take that liberty, too. <laughs> he, that's good. Hey, I'm um, just switching topics a bit here, uh, and it's something uh, obviously integral to your career. The uh, Farrelly brothers have yeah. been very, very good to you, have they not? They have been, yeah. Tell the people what they've done for you. Well, the Farrelly brothers are uh, directors uh, in, in Hollywood, and they're from the Providence area, so they're New England boys, and uh, they've been using my songs in a lot of their movies today. They've put me in three movies so mm -hmm. far, and uh, I actually did the soundtrack to a movie called Hall Pass which was, they just took instrumental tracks off of my last oh. record, stripped the vocal out, really? wow. and uh, just used the guitar pieces. <laughs> and, the, it, and it was amazing to watch, um, watch the, the movie, and then under the, in the subcontext, my songs running through the film, mm -hmm. which was um, thrilling, because I, I always consider myself as a songwriter, not an instrumentalist, but uh, those pieces work great in the film. What do you think they like about you for their films? I mean, their films are kind of, well, well they're, they're not broad comedies necessarily, but they're comedies, and you're not a comedy writer. Yeah, and they're, they're, <laughs> they're edgy comedies, and, and, and they're always trying to see, you know, uh, how far they can take things. Right. And I think I provide a sweet spot for them. I mean, you'd have to ask them, I think, mm -hmm. to get their take on it. But um, when they need sort of sonic sensitivity, they bring me in. <laughs> And, uh, you and Jonathan Richmond sometimes, right? Right, right. right. Yes, yes, as well. Yes. Same, same kind of deal there. <laughs> that's funny. You're the, the sensitive part of the Farrelly Brothers, <laughs> represented by Ellis right. Paul. <laughs> that's good. Oh God, um, you've had. I mean, you've been doing this what, 25, 26 years? Uh, yeah. Recording, playing, it's touring, out, and performing, and, and traveling. And how many? Out? Nineteen albums. Am I right there? Nineteen Some projects. Projects. Yeah, okay. yeah. How do you see your career arc if you have to step back and look at it? Right now, it looks like um, a complete mess. <laughs> <laughs> okay, explain. I mean, I've got, I've got uh, Christmas albums and kids' albums and duo records and cover records and live albums and a children's book now, and I'll probably have more children's books and more and, and novels and. Uh, 20, 30 more albums coming, and um, it's just a pile of... How old do you plan on getting to be? I want to do the Pete Seeger route. <laughs> I'm hoping that I can get to my 90s and still be active, but um, I love creating, and uh, you know, I want to leave a pile behind, and, and that's what, it, from my objective perspective on myself, it looks like a pile of stuff that somebody hopefully will want to wade through at some point in their lives and just pick out the gems. and for whatever those gems are for them. Is, is, tell me about the novel. I didn't know about that. What are, you, are you working on one now? Is that no, I just, you know, it's just something I want to do. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, I draw and I paint and I write and then I do music and that's, uh, those are the things I do. I've done, I've done posters for big folk festivals mm -hmm. and, um, and uh, I've now I've done this children's book. I'd like to illustrate one of the children's books that I put out and, and eventually I'd like to write a novel and a book of short stories. And, Kind of it reminded me of uh, a mutual friend of ours, the late Bill Morrissey, yeah. who became a very, he was a wonderful folk singer and novelist, uh, later novelist, and uh, unfortunately is no longer with us. But he played, he played a part in your early days, did he not? He did. He was yeah. uh, a major force in my life, uh, especially in the early days. He produced my first album, and um, you know, I always say about Bill, it was like having Van Gogh in the neighborhood. It was like, it, we were so lucky to have him. Mm -hmm. and, he, and he was so willing to share himself in a way that would make us learn. And, and, and br he broadened my horizons and got me interested in music I didn't even know existed. And, yeah. and then just mentored and shepherded my first album project. And, and because of that, I'm trying to do the same thing for up and coming songwriters. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been doing it for the last 10, 15 years just hurting people into my business and then once they're, yeah. they've are they been shepherded, I kick them out and bring in the next one. I know uh, Bill obviously had problems with alcohol and I was noticing in your new music some of your characters seem to as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and talk about that a little bit. I mean, that's, that seems to be the, uh, 
the, the good times are, of alcohol are tempered by some real bad times in song anyway. Yeah, I have a song called Wasted that is, uh, was inspired by a friend of mine who got, finally got a D DUI and had to spend some jail time and, and uh, it really changed his life, it saved his life mm -hmm. really. And, uh, and we, you know, we all do things to escape and alcohol seems to be the first thing on the shelf most people go for because it's just so readily available. But people use drugs and food and sex and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's so pre prevalent in our lives um, that uh, if it shows up in my songs both positively and negatively. And, and this album has a couple uh, drinking characters in it. Uh, but, um, but I think those, um, those songs offer some insight and maybe a little humor even um, to the people that are hearing them. Mm -hmm. uh, do another song in a minute. I know one sure. of them you're doing this drive-in movie. Yeah. Uh, there are drive-ins still? Yes, you know, I'm trying to find, I'm trying to find them to find a video uh, set. Are you? Yeah. So I've, I found one that's about an hour and a half away from where I live down in Virginia, and it's warm enough so that this time of year they're still functioning. And uh, Well, you, you growing up in northern Maine, me in central Maine, uh, we had drive-ins, did we not? We did. As kids, we oh, had yeah. drive-ins. I remember being 16 and trying to see a movie. <laughs> you, because it was rated R. Oh, right, and right, and sneaking in. And Did you ever ride in the trunk of the car to get in? I didn't, but I remember being jammed behind the two, the driver's side and the uh, and the passenger. Well, there, side. there was a really. We only have four people. Right. Yeah. Right. Kid, pop the trunk. And, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, what the drive-in movie? Would you like to? Sure. Uh, yeah. Let's tell do us it. about that. Good. Oh sure. In we, song. In song. Oh, in song. Sure. In song. Yeah. <laughs> that's an awkward segue. Yes, okay? but that's all right. We'll, Awkward's we'll, good. We we'll, like awkward moments. <laughs> 